kill you? Because what you meant for evil. God turned it around for my good. I'm here to tell you, I don't care what your family does to you. Treat them right, love them, do what's right with them. And what they meant for evil, God will turn it around for your good. Do I got any turnaround folks here? I'm a witness. God will change that situation. Why? Because it's a family affair. Give God praise right now. So high there. Let me tell you, if you have a loved one that passed, don't fight over trinkets. Don't fight over a little mess that don't mean nothing because it's a family affair. Be careful of allowing your friends to get in your family business. One of the most stupidest statements on the planet is when a friend come to you and say, if I were you, you need to say, friend, you ain't my twin. You ain't a part of this family. Shut up and stay out of it. You got And you've been holding on to that thing. Come to this altar right now. Oh, I see you coming. I see you coming. Let me share something with you. Forgiveness is so powerful, that person can be dead and you still can release them. Come to this altar. Now, I need y'all to repeat after me. Father. I release, I release that person, that, person, that, thing, that thing, in the name of Jesus. Because I understand, because I have been forgiven, I must forgive in Jesus' name. Now hug three people around you and just say, that thing is over. That thing is done with. I release that. I release that person. Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. Now the Lord has said to Abram, get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house, to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation, I will bless you, and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you, and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Repeat after me. I will bless those who bless you. I will curse him who curses you. And in you, all the families, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. All right. Today in this time we're together, we're going to teach on it. It's all about all the family. It's all about all the family. Father, your house your people, your word. Bless those who are here in the temple, but most of all, the masses who are watching by way of live streaming and YouTube. Let this word and this month of focusing on the family be a blessing. And all that we do, we give you glory, praise, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Uh, we just want this to mention again, y'all saw me up here, and I know our maintenance staff, did a great job of cleaning down everything, but y'all make sure, this is a, a little commercial here, make sure that you pick up your, your wipes and wherever you go, uh, do that. I, I felt like Hazel on the plane. I was just cleaning everything around me, my seat. I cleaned my, uh, uh, my tray table and, and everything. And uh, I know that the big stores, the, the Walmarts and the Kmarts and the uh, Costcos and Sam's may be running out of product. Uh, but go to the smaller venues uh, like Walgreens and, and CVS, and you'll be able to find those things, all right? We just want to give you a little, another little health commercial in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, good morning, and to my VK and my family, it's always with great joy that we come again uh, to teach and to talk about this very, very important subject called family. This month, we've been concentrating on on family but as always before we do we give the uh the valley decrees and those of you again who are watching you can do that valley decree in your home or wherever you are we have come 
to worship him, to get a word from him, to do a work for him. For the past two weeks, you've heard teaching. I started off first Sunday in February dealing with the subject, it's a family affair. Then last week, Prophet James Marshall came back uh, talking about breaking cycles or a cycle breaker. But as I prayed about what to teach today, um, Holy Spirit gave me something that I pray will be fresh and will refresh us in our whole viewpoint on um, seeing family from a God's eye view. I always taught that God is always talking, but we're just not always listening. Any of you who tune in to Nuggets at Noon on Friday at the uh, 12 o'clock hour know that many of the subjects I deal with deal with things that, that is happening in day-to-day -day life. So on this past uh, Tuesday, uh, I am a, I'm, I'm a news junkie. I like to keep up with the world so I will be more informed when sharing the word with you. I was watching the results of Super Tuesday and the election, uh, the Democratic primary, and Vice President uh, Joe Biden came and, what, and gave what I thought was a very, very presidential victory speech. But he said something that as soon as he said it, it connected to my spirit. He said in his first run for a political office, his theme was, it's all about all families. And instantly, Holy Spirit said, that's really family from a God's eye view. That it's always, it's always about God who is a father concerned about his family. He is not just concerned about a family, but he's concerned about all families. But what is critical for us to understand, and sometimes we get, we get caught up in the, the spiritual attributes of God, that he's Elohim, that he's El Shaddai, the all-sufficient one. But I need to share with you, he is just not Jehovah Jireh, our provider. He is not just Jehovah Shema, the God who is there. He is not just Jehovah Shalom, the God of our peace. He is not just God, uh, Jehovah uh, Rapha, our healer, but our God is a father, but not only uh, 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 Elder Rogers is he a father, but he is the original Godfather. He's the original Godfather. He 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 is a he he's the uh, the father. And we had a we had a clip that I had ready, but we're having a little bit of technical difficulties. But without question, I'm a movie man, and the tops of my list as my favorite movie of all time is Godfather One. Don Corleone, and he had four children. He had Sonny and Michael. Uh, uh, he had Fredo and Connie. But the whole movie and the concept of Godfather 1, 2, and 3 let us know that he was just not a, a, a father, a godfather of his four children, but he was father to every family who called him the godfather. And so uh, uh, God is the original Godfather. And I need us to get into that mind because sometimes we put God too lofty up there that we don't feel that he is concerned about our individual circumstances and situations. But I'm not making this up. The word says that he is the Godfather. 1 Corinthians 8 and 6. For yet there is one God the Father of whom all things and we for him and one Lord Jesus through him, all things through him we live. First Corinthians 15, 24 says, then comes the end when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father. When he puts an end to all rule and authority and power. Galatians 1 and 1 says, Paul an apostle, not from men nor man, but through Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead. Then Ephesians 5 and 20 says, give thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. If you really believe and understand that he is the God Father, put those hands together here and wherever you are. But I think that something that so many miss is uh, that God is the creator of uh, creation, but he is only the father to his family. Hmm. Colossians 1.15 says, he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over creation. 
Then Titus 1 and 4 says, to Titus, a true son in our common faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior. But if there's one verse that I believe that shows us that, that God the Father wants and is concerned about all families being in his family is Romans 10 and 9. Romans 10 and 9. For if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Can some saved folk just give God a praise right there? What we must understand, that whatever family that you, you're, 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 you're in, the Marshalls, the, the, the Newtons, the, 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 the Callie Wilsons, whatever family that you're in, we were born in that family and we had no choice. But to be a part of God's family you have to make a choice. And I don't know if I'm all by myself. The best decision that I ever made in my life was to enter into the family of God. Put a praise right there. And yet if God is the father to all, to his family, what does this father say about families? Where? I asked the question, where and, and how was the first mention of family ever made? And when I went to the word of God, the first time family ever came up was in Genesis 12 chapter 1 through 3. Look at what it says uh, here. Genesis 12, 1 through 3. Now the Lord said to Abram, get out of your country, from your family, from your father's house, to a land I'll show you. I'll make you a great nation. I will bless you. I'll make your name great. You shall be a blessing. I'll bless those who bless you, curse those who curse you. But here's the key. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. When I looked at that, that Genesis 12 and 1, God always has progressive re revelation. When he told Abraham to get out from your country and from your family and the father's house to a land I show you, Holy Spirit gave me a revelation that sometimes the father has to move us from where we are in order for us to be a blessing to others. I'm a living witness that... Uh, in 1976, I grew up in, in uh, Cleveland, Ohio, went to Bowling Green State University. But in 1976, the Lord moved me from my father's house, from uh, uh, Cleveland to Chicago. But he had a reason for it. It was not just for my own individual family. God understood that he had a plan for my life, for me to bless other families. And I pray that they, over the years, some families at Valley Kingdom Ministries have been blessed by that move. But it was bigger than Valley Kingdom Ministries International. Y'all, I look back on my life and I'm so blessed that God has allowed me to speak to families in the Caribbean. I've speak, uh, spoken to families in, in Argentina, in Brazil. I've spoken to families in Nigeria and in Ghana and Kenya, in Hong Kong and in London and literally around the world. God had to move a little Cleveland boy to, to another place in order that I can be a blessing to more than my family. Somebody give God the praise but forget about H. Daniel Wilson the ultimate is Jesus God had the father had to move Jesus from where he was in heaven to earth in order to bless all of the families the son of God had to become the son of man so that the sons of men could become sons of God oh y'all missed that the son of God had to become the son of man so that the sons and daughters of men could become sons of God I don't know about you but I'm so thankful that I'm a son of God come on give God the praise but as I looked Pastor Jeff as I, as I looked at this uh, uh, Genesis chapter 12 God began to give me some new revelation because most of us looked at that Genesis 12 1 through 3 and thought that this whole three verses was, was all about Abram. Hmm. All about him being blessed. Ah. But Genesis 12 and 3 tells us the real message behind Abram's move. And that is, it says, I will curse them that curse you, and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Now, the first thing that I really want to get to understand, if you get nothing else out of this uh, brief message today, is you cannot have the mindset that it's all just about your family. Oh, 
It's, it's, a lot of people have that attitude that is us four and no more. Listen, our mindset must be greater than our own individual family. Yes, your family should be first, but your family should not be all. Repeat after me. My family should be first, but my family should not just be all. Have you ever thought about, you know, and I have an inquisitive mind. Pastor Bear sometimes say I'm nosy, but I have an inquisitive mind. But listen, I, I, I ask, what if Jesus had the same selfish attitude that many of us have about our own individual families? Can I ask some what if? What if Jesus was only concerned about his mother and father, Mary and Joseph, and his brothers who were born later? What if he was only concerned about his own family? I began to just to do some mental gymnastics. 5,000 people would have never got fed. If he was only concerned about his own family, Jairus' daughter and the widow named son would have remained dead. If he was only concerned about his own family, Peter's mother-in-law would have stayed sick. Mary and Martha would have never seen their brother Lazarus live. Legion's mama and daddy would still would have a crazy son in the graveyard. We must forget that as we bless other families, God will bless our families. Put a praise right there. And yet the father says something very powerful to this fatherless man named Abram because when you read Genesis chapter 12 Abram had not been renamed Abraham which is father of the faithful he was now a fatherless uh, man and yet God made one of the most powerful proclamations that all of us who are sitting here who are watching by way of the internet and YouTube have been blessed that from the father's God's eye view he is concerned all about all families. Through Abraham, the father of the faithful, and Jesus Christ, God has blessed all families in the earth, especially those families who are in his family. Now, there are many, but I can only deal with uh, the big three. Let me talk about in these next 10 minutes about the way that we who are in God's family have been blessed. Number one, the Godfather will always protect his family. Somebody put a praise right there. I, I said the Godfather will always protect his family. Genesis 6 and 13 says, And God said to Noah, The end of all flesh has come up before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them from the earth. But look at what happens in the next chapter. Genesis 7, verse 1 and 7. But the Lord said to Noah, come into the ark, you and all your household, because I have seen that you are righteous before me in this generation. And then verse 7 says, now Noah and his sons and his wife and his son's wife went into the ark because of the waters of the flood. Listen, y'all, I want y'all to understand, and I want to thank the, uh, the Shekinah Glory for ministering that, but I need to understand, y'all, we cannot allow panic to turn into pandemonium. Yes, this coronavirus is serious. It's really serious, but we must be careful and prayerful, but never fearful because I have a word from the word of God. God knows how to protect his family. Oh, come on, somebody just give God a prayer. God shows how to protect his family. I, I mentioned and ministered on this past Friday, for those of you who tune in to Nuggets at Noon, I talked about the grace of Goshen. Let me just take you back to, uh, to Exodus, the book of Exodus, chapter 9. The people of God were in captivity in Egypt. And God, by his power, decided to deliver them. And so plagues came. There were ten. And yet, when I reread that again, I saw a difference between Egypt and the people of God. Can I just point that out? Exodus 9 and 4. And the Lord will make a difference between the livestock of Israel and the livestock of Israel, uh, uh, Egypt. So nothing shall die 
of all that belong to the children of Israel. Let me go through them all and then I'll explain. Exodus 9, 26. Only in the land of Goshen, where the children of Israel were, there was no hell. Exodus 10, 22 and 23. Moses stretched his hands up to heaven. There was thick darkness in all the land of Egypt for three days. They couldn't see each other. Nor could they rise from the place for three days. But the children of Israel had light in their dwelling. Somebody ought to give God praise. This text is telling us that in Egypt, there were plagues that affected everybody. But somehow God divided the people who were in Egypt from the children who were in Goshen. I'm here to decree today. I don't know what's going to happen, but we the family of God. God knows how to protect us that we will not see what other people are seeing. Somebody give God the praise right there. God can put a canopy of protection over his people. They were walking around dark in Egypt. But the, but the children of Israel were chilling with light in Goshen. All the cattle were dying in Egypt. Oh, but the children of Egypt was eating steak in the land of Goshen. Hell was coming down, destroying everything. But it was sun shining over in Goshen. I decree that no matter what is happening in the world, God the Father knows how to protect his family. Somebody give God the praise right there. Oh, I understand that Noah and his family, they made it through the flood. Only eight people. Y'all, you know, there are many kind of floods besides water. And I decree today by the word of God that whatever flood the enemy is trying to send in your life, that God will protect you. The flood of unemployment, the flood of sickness, the flood of divorce, whatever that the enemy look to destroy you, God will bring you into the ark of safety and keep your family. Somebody give God a praise right there. How does he do it? Exodus 12 and 13. Exodus 12 and 13. Exodus 12 and 13. Is that my scripture? Now the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be on you to destroy you. When I strike the land of Egypt, you know, the Lord gives me revelation. I don't know if you remember, put that slide up. About a year ago, God gave me the revelation to go about your house and put the red blood. Oh, God, I didn't know that Corona was coming. I didn't know this virus was coming. But I'm going to tell you, if you put that over your door, you covered by the blood of the lamb. If you ain't did it already, go back home and put the blood and tell the enemy you cannot come in my house because my house is covered by the blood of the lamb. Somebody give God a praise right there. Somebody shout out, I'm covered. Now give him a praise wherever you are, in your house, in your car, riding around. Give God the praise. I'm covered. God, I love you today. So number one, God knows how to protect his family. But the next benefit of being in the family of the Godfather, the Godfather knows how to provide for his family. Matthew 14, 19 and, uh, 19 and through 21. Uh, let me find it here. And he commanded the multitudes to sit down on the grass. And he took five loaves and two fish. And looking up to heaven, he blessed and broke and gave loaves to the disciples. And the disciples gave it to the multitude. And they all ate and were filled. And they took up 12 baskets full of fragments that remained. Now those who had eaten were about 5,000 men besides women and children. Stay tuned. I minister this many times. But God is a God of progressive revelation so many miss the real miracle of this story when we think about this story we always think of Jesus feeding the 5,000 but that's not totally true this miracle was 
Jesus fed 5,000 men and their families. Y'all just missed that. The only ones that were counted were the men. They did not count the women and the children. Oh, God, help me here. God gave me these little nuggets. He had them. Look at, look at Luke 9, 14. They give something that Matthew didn't get. For there were about 5,000 men. He said to his disciples, make them sit down in groups of 50. Why would they divide them up in groups of 50? I believe that God gave directions to his disciples to separate and put families together. The reason why it was only 5,000 was they put the bread and the fish in the hands of the head of the household. Oh, y'all ought to hear me here. And it was the head of the household who took care of the rest of his family. Holy Spirit told me that any father who takes the provisions and put it in his hands and feed his family, God will always bless that family. Somebody give God a praise. He had them sit down in groups of 50s, probably men, given just a man, because the food was placed in the hands of the household. This is spiritual and natural. God will always bless the hand of the man who take care of his family. But I don't want us to miss this. Put up Matthew 14 and 20. It's so important. It's so important. It says, so they all ate and were filled. They all ate and fulfilled. Not only were the 5,000 men filled, but all of their families. I decree that God is not going to leave any family out. Every one of his children and family, God is going to take care of in this season. Somebody put a praise right there. But the final little nugget he gave me on this provision, put that back up. And they took up 12 baskets hmm, full of fragments. The men who served the families had some extra to take home to their family. When we help the Godfather serve families, he will always give us more than enough for our family. Put a praise right there. Final point, I'm going to my seat. We're going out of here. The Godfather knows how to protect his family. The Godfather knows how to provide for his family. But the ultimate, the Godfather knows how to save families. Acts chapter 16, verse 25. Acts chapter 16. But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the prisoners were listening to them. Come on up, SGM. And suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were open and everyone's chains were loose. Again, too many have looked at this story and have missed the main message that the master wanted to release. So many sermons have been doing Paul and Silas prayed at midnight. And I'm not saying anything wrong with that because that's a powerful point. Midnight always represents the darkest hour of the night. That is even right for us to pray even when situations look dark. Many have, have, have looked at this text and, and, and have said that the main message was that everybody's chains were loose. That every door was open. Y'all, we have been called to set the captive free. But I believe that the main part of this story was the man and his whole family got saved. The man and his whole family got saved. Acts 16, 29 to 33, we'll close on that. The jailer was petrified. His life was on the line because now all of these pr prisoners we're about to have a jailbreak. He called for a light and he fell on his feet before Paul and Silas and he brought them out. And he said, sirs, what do I need to do to get saved? And look at the answer. They said unto him, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. But not just you, all of your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him. 
and all who were in the house. And he took them that same hour of night and watched their stripes. And immediately he and his family were baptized. Too often we are satisfied, y'all, me included, with just a few folks in our family who are saved. Uncle Joe is saved and Big Mama is saved. But what about all the cousins and aunts and nieces and nephews who don't know the Lord Jesus Christ? These are the ones that we should be trying to reach out because to God from a God's eye view, it's all about all being in this family. As important as that jailer was, God sent this whole miracle that night for not only for that jailer to be saved, but for his whole entire household. Put up Acts 16.33, and I end on that. And they took them the same hour that night, washed their stripes, and immediately he and all, somebody say all, all, all his family was baptized. I leave you today by saying, yes, God wants to protect our family. Yes, the Father wants to provide for our family. But more than anything else, the Father wants to us, he wants to save our families so all of our families will become members of the family of God. Put those hands together and give God praise. I know we can't touch hands, but lift your hands up. And Father, I pray right now that everyone under the sound of my voice who is the few who are here in the temple and those masses who are watching by way of the internet, that they do not go through life fearful of this pandemic called corona. Let us operate in wisdom. Let us be careful. Let us be prayerful, but never let us be fearful. Because you, the Godfather, you are looking out for all of our families. You will protect our families. You will provide for our families. But more than anything, you want to save our families. So we decree even right now that everyone under the sound of our voice that at some time and somewhere and some way that the families of ours will become families of yours. We give you glory, we give you praise, and we give you honor. It's in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen. If you're in the temple or if you're at your home and the message blessed you, give God the praise right now. Give it to him. SGM, minister to a word. If you've never received Jesus Christ, here. Go ahead. Yes. Yeah. Shall prosper. It won't work, no weapon formed against me. Yes, yes. Shall prosper. It won't work. If you're in the temple today and you've never received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you can step out and one of these elders, ministers, or deacons will lead you and have you become a member of the family of God. But more than anything, I want to speak to you, the internet audience, that if you're sitting there with a family member at the breakfast table in your living room, wherever you are, and you've never received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, from a God's eye view, God is concerned about everybody becoming members of his family. It's so simple. The Bible said if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God is raised from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So wherever you are, be it on your computer, your smartphone, your desktop, your laptop, your television, wherever you are watching this live broadcast, put your hands on there and repeat after me. Dear Lord, I ask you right now to come into my life as my Lord and my Savior. I heard that you can save anybody from anything, so save me and my family right now. And we'll give you glory, and we'll give you honor, and we'll give you praise. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And if they prayed that prayer and did that, 
Welcome to the family of God. Come on, give God praise. Come on, y'all meant it. It won't work. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. It won't work. It of our tefillah ministry I want them to stretch out their right hand the right hand is the right hand of blessing and we want to decree that those who are in the temple but more than anything that those who are watching by way of the internet watching by live streaming that no weapon form shall prosper y'all do not walk in fear I've been saying it all week don't walk in fear walk in faith do all the things that the medical experts are doing. Wash your hands. Do the cleaning. Do all of the things. But more than anything, trust in God. And so even right now, we decree and we declare as we speak over the airways, we thank God for technology. That you don't have to be an oak forest, but we can speak into your life. And we decree and we declare that everything in God's word, that God will do whatever he said he would do. We missed the scripture, but I know it. You need to recite over your family every day 
that 91st uh, a number of Psalms, especially at verse 7 through 9, that it says that no plague shall come near your dwelling. And I decree and I declare that we stand on the promises and the word of God. I don't care if Corona is there all around your job, in the neighborhood, in the grocery store. It will not come to your house. I speak a blood covering over every home, every family represented in the name of Jesus. We decree it. We count it done by faith. And we give your name the glory. The praise and the honor. Somebody shout glory to God in this hour. Yeah, yeah. No weapon. No weapon. No weapon. No weapon. No weapon. opportunity to give online those of you who are in the temple today as soon as we finish this you can bring your tithes and offering to uh, the altar but if you already are giving online we just thank God for you but we want to just to speak to our internet audience to our members who are live streaming it is crucial and critical that we be faithful this week in our giving again if you normally give by envelopes you can either mail it in or bring it by the administrative offices between the hours of 9 and 5, uh, Monday through Thursday. But we encourage you, we don't know what the future holds, that you begin to download our app and our website, and there are instructions, there are videos there that will teach you and show you how to give by way of the Internet. You can text to give by texting VKMI77977. VKMI77977. Seven, seven. Download the Valley app. We're going to be using technology to keep you updated all week long on what's going on in the next couple of weeks. We want to continue just to speak blessings into your life. And again, we continue to repeat. Be prayerful. Be careful. Come on, repeat after me. Be careful. Be prayerful. But don't be fearful. For God has not given us the spirit of fear but power, love, and a sound mind. If you believe that, give God a praise right there. God bless you. Thank you so much. Tune in next week for the Valley Experience. Stay tuned. It's going to be a wonderful week. God bless you. You can bring your tithes. You are dismissed. God bless you. We love you. Thank you. Hey.
we are so blessed here to have a powerful, powerful sermon and message given to us week in and week out. We don't take for granted that God uses our vessels of Apostle H. Daniel Wilson to just labor before God and Holy Spirit just release what he will have us to receive from him. And so we hope that you receive that message. We also hope that you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You know, it's amazing to think that God sent his only begotten son. I'm a mother and I know I could not sacrifice my own children. So that shows you the love of God that he sent his only son, Jesus. So if you want to be a part of the kingdom connection, not just part of Valley Kingdom Ministries, but a part of God's kingdom, you first have to believe in your heart and confess out of your mouth that Jesus is the son of God. He died on a cross for me and you, and he rose on the third day. If you did that, and if you believe that, then you are part of the kingdom. And if you would like to connect with us and continue to grow in your journey with Jesus, you haven't already, fill out that online connection card so we can contact you and make sure that you're getting the tools that you need so you can continue this kingdom walk. Again, if you haven't already, we couldn't do all the great works that we do without you gracious donors. So please go to the app or our website and hit online giving and you can even set reoccurring giving you can give your tithes you can give your offering you can give pastor love and next week we're going to give out first fruit i can't wait until the digging deep on thursday you know we're not on wednesday anymore so check us out on thursday we'll have chat hosts again to chat chat with us but most of all share this kingdom message so that we can get this message out share the youtube channel or facebook until the next valley experience we'll see you later